almost make it all the way to, to the week of the game and suffer a blow like Harold? I mean, it's definitely unfortunate. Um, hate it for him. Know how hard he's worked. And I know he prides himself on being able to play every single game. And obviously, to have an injury like that right before you know game week is pretty tough. And I think it's a thing that, you know, I understand as an organization, we have to look forward and keep pushing. But, you know, as players, to have a season in the injury like that, especially before the season starts, I don't really want to gloss over that, man. I think Harold is a, is a great player. He's been with us for a long time. He's put in a lot of work, has had a lot of production here. So, like I said, just hate it for him and just praying for him and his family um, because there will be dark times coming ahead as far as for him mentally and make sure I'm reaching out to him, make sure that, you know, he's staying uh, mentally engaged. He's not getting too down on, on what happened because, you know, God works in mysterious ways and we never know in these type of moments, you know, why these things happen. But, um, like I said, man, it's just unfortunate, and uh, I'm always going to be reaching out to him make sure that he's good mentally. How does the team respond after that, Kevin? How does, how does the team kind of reset itself or reload after such a significant injury? In the yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy, but as an organization, you have to keep pushing forward. And, you know, we always preach over here next man mentality, but it's, it's a reality, and it's going to be tested right now. Um, obviously, Weaver, who's having a really good preseason, Two really good preseasons. I know he's looking forward to his opportunity to get out, uh, looking forward to his chance to get an opportunity to go out there and make some plays. Ola came here from Pittsburgh, looking for more opportunities. Other than being a special teams player, he's going to get his chance as well. So, uh, within the a loss of Harold, opens up opportunities for other guys. So that's just how we have to operate it. And um, we're not going to be looking, and I'm not going to ask, or the coach is not going to ask these guys to be more than who they are, or try to replace Harold's productions to go out there and be you. And uh, I think that'd be good enough. As much as Harold has played in terms of snaps the last few years, it's probably not one guy who can step in and do everything he did, right? I mean, guy had 12 sacks last year. Uh, I think it's going to be not unrealistic, but I think it's going to be hard to ask these guys to to put up Harold's production or whatever. Obviously, we want them to. Obviously, I want Weaver to have 20 sacks this year or Ola, whatever it may be. But um, like I said, a guy like Harold, the production he's had, the durability he's had, it's going to be harder to replicate that or replace it. So uh, we're just going to ask these guys to go out there and go have fun and, and take advantage of their opportunities. How much do you have in the way he, he hops around, stacks, uh, drops? That, that's it's awful versatile, awfully versatile guy, yeah? Yeah, I mean, like I said, Harold can play, you know, our base personnel, our sub personnel. He's able to drop in coverage and also rush the passer. So that's very valuable for a guy like him, and that's why he got paid and got the contract that he got. The movement of Phil coming in here today at the start of game week. I'm talking about more just it's season now. Oh, yeah. Season, everything's behind. I'm juiced up, honestly. Uh, I've been waiting for this for a couple of weeks. Obviously, um, training camp, you're trying to stay in that training camp mode, but over this weekend, be able to reflect, spend some time with family, uh, just telling my family it's time for me to kick in the mode. You know, I'm not going to be taking too many calls and and texts and all this. If you got any issues, kind of just, you know, give it to my wife and she'll pass it along. But, um, yeah, I'm just super excited. The season's about to start, and we got the Giants going up here week one, so I'm excited. Maybe even without Harold, what is maybe this front capable of? Without, even though you, you guys are losing such a key right. guy, you still have some guys up front. No, I still think we're capable of great things, and I'm, we're going to be expecting great things from this um, from this front seven or just from this defense period. So uh, as an organization, we have to continue to move forward, and it's going to be a next man up mentality. But, you know, and I hate to say it, but just because Harold went out does not mean that we're going to be, you know, looking at ourselves like, hey, we're not going to be able to be the type of team or the type of defense that, that we were capable of. Uh, we're going to expect, and we've always expected, for backups to play like starters. So that's going to be the expectation going forward. You were on a little scout team at the beginning of your career, and how hard was it to, to say, like, I'm running this card. How am I going to make an impression doing exactly what's mapped out for me? Yeah, my rookie year, I was, I was definitely on a scout team defense. And honestly, you read the card, but for me personally, I was going out there trying to make plays. Uh, I mean, sometimes they'll tell us during certain situations, like, hey, don't pick the ball off and stuff like that. But I really wasn't caring about that. I was trying to go out there and get better myself. And uh, I made a couple of picks against Marcus uh, when I was on scout team. So, And I think it was about, like, obviously you want to take care of guys. But, you know, being on the scout team or practice squad, you're one of, this is your only real opportunity to make a name for yourself and show the coaches that, hey, I'm ready to play. I want to step up. So. I tell the young guys, go out there and make plays. Like, don't go out there and be timid and do exactly what the car says. Or I'm not telling you to, to go against what the coach say, but, hey, you know, your film is your resume. So go out there and put some good stuff on film. How do you play better this year in the opener than you did a year ago? Don't do what we did last year, I'll tell you that. Uh, no, nah, I mean, this is two totally different offenses. Uh, Arizona was definitely a tempo offense. They did some things that we're not used to. Um, 
and Kyler Murray. They did a really good, great job uh, with their receivers making plays. So I think for this game right here, obviously, and I've talked about it in the locker room last week, uh, I think it's going to start with 26. Uh, we're going to have to stop the run, but also stop a lot of the QB runs as well. I mean, Daniel Jones is very similar to Josh Allen. He's not as big as him. But he's, he's broken ADR runs. This guy can really run, especially when he get in the red zone. We think we're going to have some QB run game, short yardage, things like that. Um, we're going to have to be great tacklers, obviously with Saquon, but also uh, with Tony and uh, that rookie Robinson. I think he's a pretty good receiver who was at Kentucky. I think he's going to be real good. A lot of shifty guys, really good route runners. Um, and then at the end of the day, it's week one. So we can sit here and watch a bunch of Buffalo film from their offensive coordinator or uh, Daybo, who's the head coach now and watch them, those things. But they're going to do stuff that we haven't seen before. And I think we just have to make sure that we're keeping our composure on the sideline and be settled when, you know, we might have to make some adjustments on the sideline because at the end of the day, it's always week one in the NFL, so you can expect anything. How much more cognizant of that do you have to be in week one, though, when you have a team like Buffalo that's or uh, New York that's had the turnover coaching staff-wise and personnel-wise? Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I always find it not necessarily tough, but when you're watching film, especially me watching film is – during the offseason in week one, you really only can watch the personnel groupings or the guys that's there. But as far as the offense, you have to watch old clips of, you know, Buffalo and all these other teams. And the same thing on the offense, I think their defensive coordinators from Baltimore. So they're watching Baltimore film. Because like I said, I mean, you're not, you don't really have a, a menu or as far as this team or what they did last year. So I'm big on watching personnel first and foremost. But as we come together as a team, we're going to watch a lot of Buffalo stuff. We've been watching Buffalo stuff as well. And some of the stuff that they are trying to – they carried over in the preseason. So, uh, I mean, that's the beauty of week one. You never really know what you're going to do. I honestly think that it's, more, it's going to be more about us trusting the stuff that we do. Uh, we're not going to go out there necessarily thinking about, hey, let's be prepared for everything. It's like – as a defense, I feel like we have to look at ourselves like it's offense. Like, we're going to go out there and attack. We're not just going to go out there and sit back and wait to see what they're going to do. Then we react. No, we're going to attack the entire game and try to set the tempo and set the tone. There's so much newness. Like, how much of a filling out period do you have in that opening game? Yeah, it's going to be a little bit, especially uh, early in the game. Because, like I said, you know what they did in Buffalo, but you have to see if what they did in Buffalo is going to exactly match what they do week one in the first couple of drives. We know offensive coordinators are going to have like their first 15, first 20 plays scripted. Uh, so I'm expecting anything within those first 15. Then usually after that, plays start to repeat themselves. I know with Buffalo, like they ran a lot of uh, three-level concepts, especially early in the game, and they repeated themselves towards the end of the game. So uh, that's going to be the biggest thing is we're – you know, getting off the field in these first two or three drives, really getting to the sideline, looking at the tablet, uh, seeing the formation, seeing the route combinations that they're running, and understanding, hey, we get in the second half, more than likely these players are going to repeat themselves. Say it again. When's the last time you thought about Cincinnati? Probably every time y'all ask me about it. Uh, <laughs> I don't Honestly, I don't really think about it. Uh, you know, you ask me about it, maybe meet somebody on the street, they say something about it or my family or anything like that. But, as, you know, personally, I don't really think about it that much. We're going to be this close to him, or are we going to back up a little bit? Oh, I need to be there. Hi, Teresa. I know. Good point. Hi, Teresa. Good morning, Mike. Uh, Mike, with the injury to Harold, the, the one advantage of last season, at least you all have plenty of experience at getting that next man up and ready to go. Yep, we've done that since uh, – you know, I mean, since I've been a part of playing this game, that's not, you know, it's unfortunate. Uh, it's disappointing. I feel terrible, uh, obviously, for Harold and, and the work that he's put in and his value to our football team. But we have to move on and, you know, get everybody ready to go win. The way he moves around, Mike, in, in terms of the flexibility, versatility, is that the hardest thing maybe to, to no, replace? We're just, you know, I mean, we're looking for ways to try to, you know, get started here. Uh, continue with the preparation with the Giants first and second down. And, you know, we'll see if, you know, those are some of the same things that some guys can do. And if not, we'll have to to make adjustments. You talked about how good a camp Rashad Weaver had and in the preseason and all. How much of an opportunity is this for him, for him to step up and play an increased role now? Well, I mean, I think he was going to have a, you know, find a role for him somehow. I think that he was, you know, like you mentioned, continuing to improve and, um had, had shown, you know, some really good things in the preseason. His ability to to disrupt the football, get his hand on a football, sack the quarterback, um, have some impactful plays. So, you know, we'll we'll see where Weave is, and 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 hopefully, you know, he can help us. 
said one of the newest guys in the group. What do you like about him? What do you tell a, a new guy coming into the coming into the, the room? Well, try to pay attention and focus, and you know there'll be some things that that we do similar to to places he's been. You know, coming from Pittsburgh, um, there'll be some things that we'll do differently. Um, you know, I know he's been meeting a lot and trying to get you know caught up to speed, and we'll see. You know where he fits in defensively and in, in, in special teams. What do you guys like about him, Mike? Uh, and do you remember, I guess, playing against him last year? Well, we'd we'd evaluated him coming out. You know, probably, you know, gives us a little flexibility there, um, with maybe the body type and and the and the skill set. Um, you know, doing some different things than maybe Weave or David um, has kind of done. So. We'll, we'll see where, where what it looks like here in the next couple of days. Not more get to stay around with Gordon over the, over the last three days. To try they've to they've met, you know. I mean, we're excited to you know to add some of these guys to to our roster here. Um, Josh being one of those guys, uh, that's had some great interactions with him so far. His professionalism, he seems like he's excited to be here, um, and, and we'll we'll see where he is as as we get to the end of the week. Prepare for this this attack. How much do you look at Buffalo, and how much does I guess different personnel change your expectations of what they'll do? Well, I mean, I think that there's a base. I'm sure. I'm sure there's things that that uh, Brian will want to do that um, has been, you know, brought with him from different places, um, Alabama, you know, Buffalo, New England. Um, certainly, the the influence that that Mike's had being in Kansas City. So these guys have been around good offenses. You know, we'll have to be ready for everything. It's it's the opening week. Like going back to when you guys brought in uh, Brewer, how much, how important were the endorsements you got on him from you know, your friends who were there with him at Texas State? Well, I think that that's you know um, a large part of it. I mean, I think we saw you know certainly tried to have a vision for the player to see where he could help us. Um, you know, having stretch, you know, have been there and. You know, and Everett and, and those coaches that we knew. Um, you, you know, I think it was it was a no-brainer really for us to try to add him to our roster after the draft. Availability being as big a quality as as it is, how much do you guys factor in Gordon's lack of availability over the course of his career? Well, those are things that you know um, really are out of our control. I mean, I think we'll we'll look at how he handles. You know, each day, and and if he is, um, it would anticipate him being available to us. Um, but but I wouldn't look at anything in the past, and we're we're excited to work with him and and see how he develops within our offense. For the sake, Warren Barkley showed you. Well, I mean, you just you know you look at the the explosiveness, the speed. Everybody's at the point of attack. You know, we understand. The strength in which he runs at, you know, I, I hope that we don't have too many, you know, one-on-one -on -one tackles. I hope that there's some more guys at the at the football when he has it. You know, they've got other guys that are good with the football. Um, you know, Tony, you know, Robinson, you know, the quarterback is is going to have it. You know, they've run him um, in the past. He can run, uh, and he will run. So. You know, those are all guys that we're going to have to be able to make sure and tackling will be, you know, critical like it is every week. But, you know, I think in this first week that just, you know, our fundamentals really uh, show out. What are the fundamentals? I mean, how hard is that week one? Guys haven't played a lot of them in a long time. What can you do on the practice field? Again? Well, that's why we practice. I hope that it isn't. You know, those are things that we're practicing, um, you know, all the time in training camp. That's what you do uh, to get ready for the season. What are the elements of Gordon's game that you guys like bringing him in? I think he's big. I think he can, you know, he's got a great catch radius, shown athleticism. What kind of thing Hitler was happy with the performance in week one last year? Do you take anything from that experience in terms of how you've handled the last couple of weeks or this week to try and make it different? Just hope that we can play and coach better. I mean, we turned the ball over, didn't do a very good job uh, taking care of the football. You know, couldn't really, you know, stop him. Um, much and it just, you know, we, we, we got beat. All through camp, your players were much more available, though, than a year ago. Doesn't that go into the preparation and, and how you feel going into this game? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that we're, we're healthier now. I mean, we'll see. I mean, that this is just the first week, and you know, we kind of see who's, who's there and then make decisions on, on the 48-man uh, roster as we work through the week.